Good evening. We are going to talk about the history of the note line and what they've done right and what they've done wrong. This video topic was requested by Scotty Stephen Nichols. First one is the Galaxy Note 1, or just the Note. Launched in October of 2011, this phone got the same reaction out of me that it did with a lot of other people, which is, why the f would you want a phone that big? It was ginormous, it was freaking huge. That's back when we thought 5.3 inch screens were huge. It had a 1.4 gigahertz dual core, dual core processor. I say that like it's ancient. <laughs> Only a gig of RAM. It still had its 8 megapixel rear camera though. 2 megapixels on the front and only a 2500 milliamp hour battery. It's so cute! <laughs> basically, Sam, Sam, yeah, basically, God. Samsung wanted to get rid of all the extra things and knickknacks and bric-a-bracs that you bring along with you and put it all into one device, which was that one. The following year, the Note 2 was released. And they really spiced up the S Pen features with this iteration of it, including pen gestures, air view, and split screen multitasking. And again, this was back when there might have been like six or seven apps that you could use with dual screen, but still, you could, and it was something like Oh my god, wow! And something else that was interesting to me is that the battery got bumped up to 3100 milliamp hours. That's a huge jump from 2500 by today's standards, and only 400 milliamp hours less than it is right now. This is in 2012! They also bumped the screen size up to 5.5 inches, which is what is standard on some other phones from some other companies that we are all familiar with. Still, probably to accommodate all those extra S Pen features. Next, we have the Note 3. It was the first Note to have 1080p, and I remember when it came out, it was like shiny around the edges, that shiny plastic, but it came out in the same year as the S4 did. And I remember the S4 was a huge deal to me because <gasps> 1080p! So that was a big deal. And they also grew the screen again to 5.7 inches. The camera also got a bump up to 13 megapixels instead of just eight. And they added that beloved infrared transmitter on the top. I don't like calling it an IR blaster. Pew pew. No, I, that's, that, annoy, that term annoys me a lot. I don't know why. It just does. They also added the USB 3.0 charging port. That's the first and the only note that they ever put that one on. And it was, while it was backwards compatible with micro USB, which is, which cannot be said for some other companies that decided to switch their charging port, but it was still impractical and it confused a lot of people and that, no, that was the S5. Like the flat thing that everybody either broke off or cut off themselves because it was so f***ing annoying to use. Yeah. They also improved upon the S Pen yet again, giving us a new air command view and also the ability for the phone to tell when the S Pen had been removed, which basically can can allow you to create if this then that kind of triggers, like the Note Buddy app, to make it sound like you're taking a lightsaber or turning on a lightsaber when you take the pen out. Super fun trick, it's so cool. Anyway, and they also started the phone going when you walked away from it if you left the pen out of its socket because the phone knew if it was in or out. Certainly has helped me remember to pick that thing up as I walk off without it. They also added a couple more apps to multi-window, but not a whole lot to write home about. Then the Note 4 came out. This one was the first for many things and the last for other things, but just, it was one of the best notes that they've ever done because it was such a wide blanket of features and things that everybody wanted. It was, and it was the first, oh my God, so cool. First phone with 2K display. And when I first heard that it was gonna have a 2K display, I'd never seen one of those on an AMOLED display before. And when I saw it, I was like, <gasps> It also included and, and kept the infrared transmitter, but unfortunately that was the last note to have one. It has not returned since. They made the switch back to micro USB with this one and they also introduced fast charging and I'm sure anybody that's used fast charging before, it's gorgeous. It was a real design turnaround for Samsung too because that was the first phone that they had introduced a metal outward, a metal outside frame with, along with the Galaxy Alpha, but that was like a teeny, teeny weeny mid-range spec phone. I can't remember which one came out first, if it was the Alpha or the Note 4. I'm pretty sure it was the Note 4, actually, that came out with that metal frame, but I just, it was so, it was like the camfered edges, a little bit of shiny matte on the very edge. It was, it was gorgeous. They also implemented the fingerprint scanner into the home button for the first time on a Note device. Yes, it was one that you had to like swipe to get it to work, 
but it still worked and I remember using it, I liked it. It was the last Samsung phone to have a removable battery, unfortunately. I don't know, like you, I think the main reason, well the main reason that I've been told that they remove the battery is because if you have, here's the contacts in the phone for the battery, for the battery pack, I guess. I hate calling it a battery pack. I need the battery pack, I have the battery pack. Just, I don't know, we'll call it a cell. <clears throat> battery cell goes up here and just touches these two contacts together. Like that's not as good a connection as if you had a, ribbon wire going from the battery cell into like into the phone like this so it's a more reliable connection the i i was told better battery life eh, i'm not so sure about all that and it also helped with waterproofing i just i know that a lot of people still hate the fact that they can't take the batteries out of their phones but it's just something you have to get used to because they are not removable batteries are not coming back that's my prediction at least. It's, it's, I don't see any indication that they are, period. And if I didn't already say it, it's the first phone to have a VR application. That was the first, they made a Gear VR headset designed specifically and only to house the Note 4. No, no other phone could go in there because the Gear VR, all phone centric VR headsets are just head mounted magnifying glasses that you put the screen up to. So obviously they couldn't do it on anything less than 2K. And even in 2K, it's not the clearest in the world. It was also a, a, little, a feature that a lot of people look over, including myself, the first Note to have a heart rate monitor on the back. And for those who are really into fitness, that was a pretty cool little feature. iPhones still can't do that. Then there was the Note 5. This one came out in 2015, which I refer to as Samsung's oops year or Samsung's boo-boo year because they just made a bunch of bad decisions. It was the first all metal and glass Note and it looked great. Like there's some people who still love it. Like it's still, it was a solid phone. It still is a solid phone for the most part for being, you know, three years old. This time around they got rid of the SD card expansion and they also made the batteries smaller. They got rid of the infrared black and Oh my god, I almost said it. They got rid of the infrared transmitter, something I was very sad to find out. But they did enable it with wireless charging, which to a lot of people, including myself, not really uh, not really worth the trade-off of getting rid of the expandable storage and the infrared transmitter and the extra battery capacity. It was the first pen with the little clicky top, the first S pen with the clicky top, so a lot of people like to fidget it around with that, including me. I try not to though, because I don't want to wear that, that wear out that little mechanism too soon. It was also a more precise tip than they, than they had ever put on an S Pen before, and it was nice. Writing with it was a pleasure. There was no Note 6, and what I've been told about why there wasn't a Note 6 is because the year that they would have made the Note 6 was the same year that they came out with the Galaxy S7 series. So they wouldn't want to make a phone that was actually more powerful and more capable than their S line with a higher or a lower number than the S line because people hear lower number and, like, and they think inferior phone or lesser quality phone. Not me because obviously the, the notes are always the premium, like top of the line, top shelf, but to the general masses, they didn't want to do that. Or maybe they just don't like the number six for notes. I don't know. So they called it the Note 7 and we all know what happened with that. The Note 7 was the first note to have an S Pen that had the same diameter in its tip as a ballpoint pen. So it was the most writing accurate note up to date. And then there's the Note 8. This one they did away with the home button and yada yada yada. You guys already know all about it. One thing that I did think was freaking awesome though is that food! <laughs> One can never go too hard on cheese. Eee, thank you, baby. Goodbye, I'm gonna go for a walk. Okay, I'm almost done. Where was I? Oh yeah, it was the first note that didn't get recalled with USB Type-C. And one thing that I noticed with the Oreo update, for those of you who have it and for those of you who are about to get it, do you know when you lock your phone with a passcode? In the past, you've always had to type four digits, hit four different buttons, and then hit OK to unlock it. Now, you have an option to disable the need to hit OK. So all you need to do, one, two, three, four, done, unlocked. I found that out and I was like, <gasps> it's what I've wanted and what a lot of people have wanted for a long time. So that's super spiffy. I want to take this opportunity now to thank our Scotties. Those who pay $10 and up a month on Patreon are Stuart Glover, Kyler, and the newest one, Eric Price. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Stephen Nichols, Nick Hawks, Spidget, Sin O, Josh Utley, Shannon Jones, Unit Omega, Don O'Brien, and Christopher Caswell. Hey, look, I stay with my Scotties. My Scotties are my boys. I ride with them. And I put that on the 
on the generation. And at the five to six dollar a month tier are the Super Beamers, which are Albert, and at the one to two dollar a month pledge are the Beamers, which are Exoseer and Encrypted Bunny. Keep riding and stay beaming. Oh crap. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're making the video. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was yelling at someone. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Okay, I'll go finish dinner. All right, babe. But it came out as. But it came out. Phone centric gear. The gear is that it was the first phone to have an HR, the heart rate sensor. No, I'm excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. The Note 7 did have the first S Pen, or excuse me. 